Hi, I'm Ed Yaw. At County College of Morris, we believe all citizens need to be informed about the important issues that affect their daily lives. That's why we're proud to support programming produced by the Caucus Educational Corporation and their partners in public television. Teaching preschoolers about money, next on Caucus New Jersey. Funding for this edition of Caucus New Jersey has been provided by the PNC Foundation, which receives its principal funding from the PNC Financial Services Group. PNC supports early childhood education through PNC Grow Up Great, a $350 million multi-year initiative that began in 2004 to help prepare children from birth to age five for success in school and life. Welcome to Caucus, New Jersey. I'm Steve Adubato. Did you know that children at the preschool level are really capable of understanding basic financial concepts? Here in the studio to give us some tips on how to talk to our kids about money are Rocia Galarza, who is Senior Director of Content and Planning and Design for the Sesame Workshop. Sesame, you guys are the best at Sesame Workshop. Mm -hmm. Ken D'Amato, Founder, President, and CEO of Domain, an online financial education program for the entire family. Our good friend Wilma, you're all good friends, but when the Newark Public Library comes up, that's where I grew up, the Newark Public Library. Wilma Gray is director of the Newark Public Library. And finally, Janice Martin is a mother of a three-year-old who she says wants everything. And Janice is also, full disclosure, one of the mentors in our great Stand and Deliver program. Listen, I want to thank you all for joining us to talk about teaching our kids, our preschoolers, about money. I want to thank our friends at PNC for making this possible. They want our kids to grow up great. And our kids cannot grow, on great, grow up great unless they know about money, right? Absolutely, absolutely. And preschoolers really can learn. Um, and there's some very basic foundations that we can start really, really early on. Like, for example, if you teach a child about making choices, about learning to wait, about sharing, all of these can actually become really basics for spending, saving, and giving. Okay, Rosia, set us up here because our, our daughter, Olivia, as we do this program, is turning two. She's obsessed by Sesame Street and Elmo. Perfect segue as she watches Elmo. And by the way, let's plug this. This is uh, for me, for you, for later. This is what now? <laughs> that is a, our initiative on financial education thanks to the PNC Bank and PNC Grow Up Great and the wonderful partnerships that we've been able to, to connect with. We've been able to do this initiative that not only has materials, but has community resources events for All families. Right. Now, we're about to set up this clip with Elmo which she watches yes. every morning. The question is, Elmo talking about financial literacy, what is he doing here? In this one, he is putting his money in three jars, one for spending, one for saving, and one for sharing. Here you go, Elmo, Sesame Street, talking to our kids. What's better than that? Let's go to the clip. This is Elmo's saving jar. That's right, Elmo. Mm. And this one is for spending. Spending. And this one is for oh, sharing. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Oh, Elmo's so excited to put his money in three jars. <laughs> oh, but there's just one problem, Miss Beth. Oh, what's that? Elmo needs a little help. Well, sure. This jar is uh -huh. for saving. Okay, saving. Oh, cool. <laughs> and this one uh -huh. is for? Oh, spending. That's right. <laughs> and this one is sharing. That's right. Oh boy, oh boy, Elmo can't wait to add more. Oh, thank you, Miss Beth. Oh, this gets Elmo. Oh, that was great. <laughs> you can always count on Elmo. Ken, let me ask you. Now you have said that we're living in the now generations, where kid now generation where kids want everything immediately. Got Elmo talking about saving. It's got to help. It absolutely does. People think you you can't start early on, and and the. Sesame Street and PNC program is a terrific program because it's, it's what it started to do is instill the right values and the right lessons early on. I mean, you're not teaching them about revolving credit or, or, uh, <laughs> or, or compound interest. What right. you're doing is you're teaching children about the basics. You don't have to talk about foreclosures, do you? Exactly. No, that's <laughs> but here's the thing. Let's go to Janice. Now, your daughter is? Three and a half. Na say her name? Kai. Kai. Now, everything about Kai here, she's three and a half. Our daughter is turning two. I always ask, is it ever too late? I hear it's not too late, but let's... Is it too early? Is it too early for Kai right now, who you say wants everything? No. For she watches Elmo and Elmo's got the saving things going on. Mm -hmm. And you get the follow-up, right? 
and you go to the Newark Public Library, we'll talk about your programs in a second. Could we turn around Kai so she gets to the point where she doesn't want everything and understands that things cost and there's a place for savings? Absolutely, because she's at an age now where um, she learns fast. So, if, like, I like the way the three, the three spending, saving, and giving mm -hmm. away. Like, I think she would be able to grasp that really easily, because you know she's still she's still learning. She by wants the, by, things now. By but, the way, where'd she get? Sorry for interrupting. Where'd she get the idea that she wants and thinks she needs everything now? Where do you think she got that? From her. Not from PBS, by the way. No, from her, <laughs> her grandparents and me what? and her family. Wait, hold on. Wait a minute. <laughs> I thought you were going to say from commercial TV. No, what it's our fault. <laughs> uh, you just said it under your breath, it's your fault. How yeah. so? Well, I mean, everywhere she goes, you know, there's toys for her. So she kind of expects that everywhere she goes, you know, she has a bike, and, you know, at her grandma's house, a bike here, you know. And, uh, you know, she has, she has an iPhone. It's not, it's not on, but, you know, it has the applications on it. So she wants her, she knows already that the phone needs charging. And, Ken's you making know. a face. Yeah, Why? seriously, though. She Why, Ken? <laughs> because that's, uh, there are certain things, there are certain tools, there are certain things that I think children need to learn to wait for. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, and again, no disrespect to how you're raising your daughter, it's very difficult to say no, but the best thing you could do for your child is say no more than you say yes. What, what Up happens when you're stomping her feet and they're saying, I hate you? What do you then, do? Then you put them in time out or you put them in your room and you do whatever they do without <laughs> having to call diapers. Well, uh, we don't, I mean, I don't like to say no. Exactly. exactly. Jump in. <laughs> Wilma, talk to us. Because, by the way, the Newark, let's, let's plug this. The Newark Public Library is doing great stuff. You're reaching 7,500 preschoolers. By the end of 2012, you're doing that. Uh, you have a Money Matters program? We have a program that is funded very generously by PNC, and uh, it's over $300,000, and it has several components. We teach children between the ages of three and five um, just the basics, the fundamentals mm. that both Ken and uh, Parent were talking about. Right how to manage money. Well, how would Janice's fact, daughter get into it? I mean, how do kids get into it? They have to be in the North Public Schools? Oh, no, they don't, have to, they don't have to uh, join. We go out. There, it's a very big outreach program. We have story hours, and we have a wonderful, wonderful uh, children's librarian by the name of Natasha Osborne, who goes out to all the free schools that she can book. Uh, she works with the community organizations and the North Public Schools, and she presents to teachers and preschoolers. And they are thrilled. Uh, she teaches the basics of saving, spending, and sharing, which, if we think about it, even as adults, those are the three principles. I know you mentioned um, all of these complicated um, concepts, but they can all be translated into the very basics. And if kids learn these things at a very early age, when their minds are so fertile, then they don't have to unlearn things. They don't have to be um, influenced unduly by parents and grandparents and, and uh, media, and they just learn the principles from a very early age, which can carry them through life, give them the skills that they need. And so, Rosia, you, you believe, as Wilma does, that mm -hmm. pre, preschool, mm -hmm. those pre-K ages, absolutely the right time? They are. And the Talk about what works and what does not. Well, the experts told us that sometimes we, we feel uncomfortable talking about money, and that le might lend us to believe that young children cannot understand basic concepts or foundational concept for financial education. And they told us, look, you have to start early. Um, that's when children are really learning about the value of things. You have, you have your favorite blanket with you. That's an opportunity to learn about the value of How things. How so? Because you know that this is special for you. And just knowing that, the, just the child knowing that this is a special blanket, this has value for me. But okay, our daughter lost. She has two. She actually had two blankets. They're they're both the same. Don't ask me why she was carrying two around. So there'll be therapy involved later. <laughs> but she was carrying two around. She, we were down the Jersey Shore. She lost one of them, mm -hmm. and we think she lost it at the beach. And so my wife said, "Oh, we have to go online and find out." I said, "Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on. Maybe not. Maybe." If we just let some time go by, because it wasn't cheap, mm -hmm. and it's been about a month, and she hasn't said a word to baby about it. Baby, she's two years old. Is that well, what you're talking about? Well, I'm talking about a comfort item, things that uh, children. But well, she doesn't have need the, two blankets. The, the she point. doesn't need two, but what she does probably, what she probably is doing right now is then she's looking for another comfort item. Then, then oh wait, this I value too. But how's that about money? 
Well, it's a beginning. It's the beginning because afterwards, when you're making the choices of what you're going to spend on and what you're, when you're going to be saving, you then use the, the, word, the concept of value to make those choices. And you make it age appropriate for two, three, four, and five year olds? Yes, because it's Elmo doing it. And it's Elmo explaining, explaining it to children. And you see, it's a, you have videos, you make it very engaging. And so these concepts, going back to their everyday routines, can actually really help them. So you start, for example, let's take choices. Right. You start with the choices they make every day, not related to money. I make choices every day on what I'm going to wear, sometimes what I'm going to eat, what I'm going to play with. And then once you're in the grocery store with your child, you explain why you're making certain choices. And I mean, that's why certain food versus why certain, certain sneakers, exactly. which are hundred dollars. Exactly. Meaning if you get, if we were to get those sneakers, I'm just playing this out hypothetically, then we wouldn't be able to get this food, which our family yes. needs. I, we need the food. We don't, we want the sneakers, but we can wait for them. Can and that, just starting that conversation is very important. And, and by the way, Elmo isn't the only one who can deliver that message. We can, we can, as parents, we can't delegate the responsibility to communicate about financial education no. to Elmo for everything, right, mm -hmm. Ken? Absolutely. The point that, that she was just making about being in the supermarket, what we, what we use, and it's kind of a, a, a mantra at Domain, is teachable moments within the family structure. Give us an so example. She just gave you a teachable moment. But I would so say you that like this, Rocio's example. Well, the example is you're in if you for a two-year-old, it's very difficult to teach certain concepts. Right. But there's things that you could do to plant seeds. Give things through Elmo in bite-sized chunks that they find humorous, they find interesting, but they don't necessarily understand how to att attack it, uh, attach it to something else. But now take it to a three and a half or a four-year-old who's in the supermarket, where you go in and you say, "We have fifty dollars. Here is a fifty. Here is five ten-dollar bills." and we can only buy things in here with this $50. And they have to see choices, and they see relative value, and they see that kids can't have everything. If you want to have those Oreo cookies, then we can't get milk, and you know that you love milk on your Cheerios, and down the line. And kids get it. They absolutely get it. Most parents don't take the time to do such things. It is it's disciplined. It's disciplined. I'm curious about this. In these difficult economic times, and I keep saying, in these difficult economic times. I'm realizing I wish there was a time where we wouldn't be saying that, but let's assume times are going to be difficult for a while. Is it more important, Wilma, than ever before that we do this? Oh, I think so. I think it has awakened the whole nation to um, the importance of understanding these fundamental things about money and money management. And these kids eat it up. You know, it's really wonderful they eat it to up. see. They, they, what do you they see do. at the library? Well, um, uh, the jars, for example. Save, spend, share. Some of the Save? Kids, Spend, spend and share. share. Go ahead, First of all, kids don't really know what money is. You start from there. What is money? You know, where does it come from? Money doesn't grow on trees. You know, parents have money, but where do they get the money? You know, some kids will say, well, my mommy gets money from the bank. But then you go back even further. Yes, your mom gets money from the bank, but she has to do something to earn the money. And so that's another principle we teach in, in a variety of ways. We have um, a vast book collection at the appropriate level, picture books that kids can, can borrow. Uh, we have the story times, which, um, you know, I already described the, sure. the children's sure. librarian. We have family fairs, and we're having one this afternoon at the North End Branch, if anybody wants to go there. We have five of them all together in, in the span of about a year, um, where we have different stations. We have uh, a fake grocery store where the kids can go up to the counter and buy things with fake money. We have a career section uh, with hats, uh, hats that represent different occupations so that kids understand that if you're a doctor, if you're a fireman, if you're a policeman, they understand these things, then you earn money and these, this money can be used to do the things that you want. Um, choice is a part of that. They learn how to make choices and they learn how to share. Do you want to give share. your brother something? For, we, for we have, with our eight, eight and nine year old, they mm -hmm. don't like to share. Now you're, you're, you're making a face. <laughs> your daughter is only child. Yes, she is. She is. How she, she is sharing? Um, she's, she, she's good at sharing candy and cakes and things, but when it comes to certain toys, she kind of keeps them to herself. Can you teach? I, I think sharing is the wrong word in the three <laughs> jars approach. Go ahead. Our, our site and other sites have, um, we have a tool on our website that's about saving, spending, and giving. Saving, spending, spending and giving. giving. And there's a three jars website 
One of our competitors has a site called Three Jars that do the same thing, teach about saving, spending, and giving. I will tell you that most children, whether it's through the school, whether it be through UNICEF or through your local church or synagogue, that children love to give. Really? When, absolutely. Absolutely. When you talk kids, most people, the majority of the people in this world from when they're children growing up are good, are all good. What gets the notoriety and what gets the press and, and makes the news is all the bad things, unfortunately, with some nice things peppered in. Kids like to do the right things. And if you actually fertilize that and water that and, and you watch that seed grow, mm. you teach children into learning that giving is more important than, than, than receiving. What happens? You're talking about Kai right now. And you're, are you worried about uh, her? Growing up, because it's one thing, I mean, we have you on because you're a friend of ours, you work with us in the Stand Deliver program, we know you're a good communicator, and you said to our producers, listen, I'm worried because Kai wants everything, but, you know, a lot of us say with our little kids, hey, they're going to grow up, don't worry, it'll all work out, because they may be three right now, but then they'll be 13, then they'll be 23, then they'll be 33 and 43, and they'll mature. Do you worry that, hey, it may not work out that way, and what's happening right now could be establishing her view of money and money management long term or do you say hey come on she's a little kid um i don't really worry about her because i i try hard to put her in the right programs so even if i don't know what to do i i always try to reach out and find since i already work since i work with children i try right. to find programs you know as a new parent because it's different from being a parent and working with kids so I, I look for programs, okay. so I'm really excited uh, about, talk this about this program. And I, and I, and I <laughs> believe ahead. that programs are a great supplement, but children learn through experiential learning. <clears throat> and experiential learning is doing. It right. means I'm going to the baseball park, and my five-year-old, who now is eight years old, and wants a dollar before he leaves, and he goes upstairs, and he pulls out of his nightstand a dollar, and he knows exactly what he can get with that dollar. How many airheads, what a lollipop, not a bottle of water. He understands, he understands currency and how it works at okay. five, now eight. So you're hardcore on this. We've talked Clearly. about one on, our Absolutely. other program, One on One. I was blown away by you because as I was talking to him, or see, I'm thinking to myself, all right, I've taken my kid to Yankee Stadium and to the Red Bulls game. Red Bulls, great soccer team we have in, in New Jersey called New York Red Bulls. They play in Harrison. That's another story. Um, and, and the jerseys are never cheap, right? Mm -hmm. And so there's a $100 jersey. And one of our sons will say, yeah, Dad, I want the jersey. And I'm thinking, OK, I'm at a Red Bulls game. I'm at Yankee Stadium. In my dopey head, I'm thinking, all right, well, I'm, I think I'm supposed to get the jersey. Well, a t-shirt costs $25. But an official Red Bulls jersey, Yankee jersey costs, you know, about 100 But that's OK. Is, is it? it is, it's OK if the person, if your child understands that what they're doing is a special treat, the it's exception. a privilege, it's an exception. And that mom and dad, you're going to go out to Yankee Stadium with your eight and your nine-year-old and your two-year-old stays home, mm -hmm. and you say, when we get in the car, how much do you think it's going to cost this family today to go to the Yankee Stadium? Let's guess. We've got to have that discussion? You have it with, you make it fun. You say, and someone says, a million dollars, and the other person says, a hundred. Well, daddy's going to say $500, including the cost of the tickets, and whoever is closest is going to, will win something. But they don't know, but, but how do we put the 500 into context in terms of it's how a, much work has to be up? Go ahead. Once Go ahead. you're in that moment, you probably would have worked with your child for a longer period of time explaining what is a need, what is a want. Yeah, talk about needs and wants, very important so, concept. It actually has become such an important part of the program because today that, that's one of the main concerns of parents. They want to make sure that they understand that they can explain to their children that sometimes they have well they, they definitely have to prioritize on the needs versus some some of the things that they cannot afford right now that you just have to wait for, which is a want. Um, the need is food, is housing, and actually the needs and wants per family can change. Uh, we have this wonderful uh, activity where we actually ask um, the group of, of community leaders, is a cell phone a need or a want? And different Good people one. will tell you whether it's a need and a want based on their own situation, and that's okay. The mo most important thing is that you're communicating with your child what is the need for your family, what is that you have to Marcia, wait for. Marcia, however, what about if that six-year-old, that five-year-old, that seven-year-old, well, let's go back to the preschoolers as well, what happens when he or she sees another kid in school or a kid in the neighborhood with the same thing? 
That they don't have. That they don't have. It, How much does it change, well, or does it not change at all? It's okay to explain that you can't. You just cannot have that. That whatever Will has right now. It's because just the way do, it is. Because no, no. our family needs to spend t uh, money in the things that we need right now. Go ahead, Will. Okay There's also a way it. to explain that maybe that family is making different choices. Absolutely. Our family. Okay. has chosen to do it this way and this family it looks like we're doing the same thing but they really aren't we want the parents to be involved we look at this very much as a family program because we want to provide a way for parents to have the language to talk to kids how do you about do that? these things well by breaking down making it very simple and then also you know we have a, a tendency as adults to, to over explain things when we see things in a different way in a more simple way we can talk to children example, in a way that they can understand. Well, <clears throat> um, think about a concrete, simple, but relevant example where people say, hey, that, that helps me right now. Let's take the, the situation with the t-shirt, for example, and I yep. agree with Ken that it's okay to do that, but you do have to explain to them that it is an exception, we can't do this all the time, and there is a sacrifice perhaps being made. The, oh, mm -hmm. uh -huh. Because I feel funny when I start talking about how many days or how many uh -huh. hours after, I, how many shows I have to tape or whatever it is. Because uh -huh. there's a part of me, truthfully, uh, let's, let's put this out there. It's not about me. It's about all of us who go, who say, I want my kid's life to be better than, and, I, and by the way, your life is not better just because you have more things, obviously. Yeah. But I want my kids to have more opportunities and to have more things, yeah, uh, than, than, you know, the one, what I had growing up. But I will say this, there is a part of me that doesn't want my kids to know a whole lot about the financial troubles and challenges and struggles, meaning, like, I don't want them to know. Like, if we lose a sponsor to the television yeah. show, or if I lose a client, I don't want to talk to my kid about right. that. But, you well, know, there's a but, but it has implications. But it well, there's a few things. I mean, we're talking, we can get into a macro conversation. And by about the way, everyone out there, you're dealing with the same, or, or lose a job. Oh. You don't want the kid not sleeping at night mm -hmm. because his mom or dad lost a job. But go ahead, that's a financial reality. This is bipartisan, not Democrat, not Republican. Not about politics. The reality today is, and it is a fact, that our children, there is over a 70% chance that children this generation will not have and enjoy the same type of prosperity that we're having today. It is a fact because there is not, we don't have the growth, we don't have the, right. the income as a country, we have debt. It's, it's, it's a scary thing. Does it thing. make it more important to have our children be more financially literate and better educated than ever Absolutely. before? Absolutely. Absolutely, and to understand that you can't have everything. This is, an, this is we, are, we have become okay a society, no. we okay have become a society no. of immediate gratification. And I'm guilty of it with my children as well. And it's, it's changed over the years for some situations in our family because we had a family tragedy with my oldest boy passing. So it's even more difficult to be hard on the kids, but we still have to. David and William, my, my 12, soon to be 13 and eight year old, my eight year old wants an iPhone because his friend who's nine has one. And we said no. And we said, when you'll, you'll get to be, when you're a teenager, you can have one of those too. How difficult is it? It's very difficult. But we don't go into we can't afford it. We go into the fact that that's what that family does. And he'll deal with Not that? Not right or wrong. He has no choice he'll survive. but survive. After they whine and they whine and then they stop. <laughs> what are you taking away from this program? Um, just different strategies on how to, how to talk to Kai. I'm definitely going to use the three jars. Absolutely. You like the three jars. And, and just a lot of the um, perspective that you have as well. I, I really appreciate it. By the way, all take this. This would be good for her? Yes. This is part <laughs> of the PNC Grow Up Great Initiative for me, for you, for later except this is for you for now. <laughs> this is Elmo, right? This is really good stuff. Uh, Rocia, let me give you the last word on this. Uh, how, uh, how gratifying has this been for you? 10 seconds. It's been incredible because we develop these materials, this content, and then we see the families actually implementing it. We go to conferences and we have the parents we'll having a half moment. You have the, the library that is taking it to the communities, and it actually... The preceding program has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating 25 years of broadcast excellence, and 13 for WNET, NJTV, and WHYY. Funding for this edition of Caucus New Jersey has been provided by the PNC Foundation, which receives its principal funding from the PNC Financial Services Group. PNC supports early childhood education, 
through PNC Grow Up Great, a $350 million multi-year initiative that began in 2004 to help prepare children from birth to age five for success in school and life. Promotional support provided by NJ Biz, all business, all New Jersey. The Star Ledger and NJ.com, everything Jersey. And by New Jersey Monthly, the magazine of the Garden State, available at newsstands. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. Caucus New Jersey has been produced in partnership with TriStar Studios. I've been wrenching for 17 years now. Anything that's got our engine in it, we're working on it. It's nice to know that you have good insurance. Yeah, I'm always comfortable knowing I have Horizon no matter where I go. I don't deal with them a lot, which is, which is a good thing. You know, I have a 17-year-old right down to 17 months. I work hard for my money, and I want to make sure that my family is taken care of and Horizon takes good care of us. This is One on One. I'm a fool for you, babe. Join me as we get up close and personal with some of today's most compelling personalities. This is one you can't afford to miss. Weeknights at 7 and 11.30 p.m. on NJTV and 12.30 a.m. on 13.